Next, we covered the role of an important institution, religion, in morality, and we looked at the work of Norrin Zion, who asked these primary questions. He wants to know whether religion makes people moral. So the first question is, do religious beliefs and practices actually shape moral behavior? Second, do all religions concern themselves with moral behavior? And third, is religion necessary for morality? And we'll look at a few of his um, key findings and how he um, investigated these questions. But really importantly, we need to know how does Noren Zion conceptualize religion? Um, what does he think morality is when he goes searching for the relationship between religion and morality? So how does he operationalize these concepts? Ultimately, Noren Zion describes religion as a set of precisely directed beliefs and behaviors, and these emerged from innate cognitive tendencies towards supernatural belief. These were assembled over historic time, and the content of the beliefs underwent cultural evolution, making religions into these little packages of beliefs and behaviors that have different shapes in different cultural and historical contexts. This definition of religion allows for religions to share universal features that evolve together, but also show dramatic cultural variability as far as the content of their belief systems. So that was religion. What is morality? According to Norrin Zion, um, morality originates in a similar way to religion from cultural evolutionary forces and it's a natural phenomenon. It converges the products of genetic and cultural inheritance. He ends up borrowing a, def a definition of morality from Jonathan Haidt. Morality is values, virtues, norms, practices, identities, institutions, technologies, and evolved psychological mechanisms that work together to suppress or regulate self-interest and make cooperative societies possible. Um, institutions is listed in there, um, so religion itself can be nestled within morality in this definition. And importantly, cultural evolutionary processes contributed to both religion and morality. So what makes them unique? The roots in these innate tendencies toward ritual and supernatural belief, that's unique to religion and that institution. Many systems of values and norms and institutions other than religion keep morality functional um, that are even relevant to religion. Okay, so grounded in those definitions of religion and morality, we went on to look at several ways that Noren Zion examines question one. Do religious beliefs and practices encourage moral behavior? And he looks at evidence from three sources to evaluate this. Each of them has increasing scientific effectiveness. So first, he starts out looking at sociological surveys, um, some readily available data. He looks at behavioral self-reports and also the results from experimental priming studies. Results from studies using experimental priming are where we really start to see that religion does something. In these sorts of studies, experimenters observe effects from implicit or subtle primes on participants' behavior. In this case, their willingness to give cash offers to other people in economic games like the classic dictator game. In the dictator game, the dictator is given an amount of money and can choose to share it with another per person in any portion they wish. Their donation out of $10, for example, $5, is taken as a measure of their prosociality. In the studies, participants are primed with religious or secular primes, and there is a neutral control condition. In the religious prime condition, they're given words that implicitly activate God concepts. They get five scrambled up sentences that contain the target words, spirit, divine, God, sacred, and prophet. And the other five sentences they get are the neutral control 
uh, sentences where they only contain neutral words unrelated to religion and they don't really allow you to form another coherent concept. Participants play the unscramble game and make them into proper sentences. In the secular prime condition, they're given words priming concepts of moral authority, but not God. Subjects in the secular prime condition unscramble sentences that contain target words civic, jury, court, police, and contract. In the neutral condition, again, they're just given these scrambled sentences without target words um, connoting either these religious or moral authority secular concepts. The results are here in this graph, and you can see that the amount of cash offered is on the y-axis, and we can see results for the neutral prime condition, the religious prime condition in dark gray, and the secular prime condition in light gray. The participants primed by religious words gave about double compared to the control condition. They almost gave an even split, five out of 10. But look, so did those primed by the secular words. This suggests that secular primes connoting law and order can have the same effect on pro-social behavior as religious primes connoting sanctity. All of this is when playing against people who aren't considered out-group members anyway, when imagining um, a dictator scenario where the recipient is not an out-group member.